Hello, and welcome to this Bedrock Lecture on Human Rights and Climate Change. My name is Anthony Ingraffia. I am the Dwight C. Baum Professor of Engineering Emeritus at Cornell University and a Senior Fellow at Physicians, Scientists, and Engineers for Healthy Energy. The title of my lecture is Shale Gas, the Technological Gamble That Should Not Have Been Taken. From the time that we are young, we begin to hear from our parents this very simple precept. Just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. As we grow older, we realize through experience and gathered wisdom that we should weigh any risk that we take by doing something we've never done before to broader consequences and unintended consequences. We learn to be wise. This precept also applies to science and technology. For example, our noted futurist Arthur Clarke wrote back in the 1950s basically the same thing. But they knew in their hearts that once science had declared a thing possible, there was no escape from its eventual realization. What does this precept have to do with human rights and climate change today? Well, let's fast forward to a few years ago when my philosopher friend Adam Briggle wrote, fracking exemplifies the technological wager by which I mean a gamble or even a faith that we can transform the world in pursuit of narrowly defined goals and successfully manage the broader unintended consequences that result. He was referring directly to the gamble that was taken early this century. The oil and gas industry then discovered that they could do something they had never been able to do before, extract prodigious amounts of gas and oil from shale formations. They knew it was a gamble. They saw then only the narrow intended goals. They didn't then, nor do they now, acknowledge the broader unintended consequences. Let's look at both. The narrowly defined goals. Shale gas development might create jobs. Shale gas development might encourage economic growth. Shale gas development might provide energy security. It could lower prices for energy. And it could displace dirty coal. Well, in and of themselves, those are wonderful, if true, immediate consequences. But they were the goals that would only affect about 5% of the world's population, that of North America. That's pretty narrow. Let's now look at the broader unintended consequences that we see all around us every day. The first of those is the elongation of the fossil fuel era. Next is the depression of renewable energy supply. And finally, the exacerbation of climate change. I'm going to use a few slides in the next few minutes to demonstrate each of these broader unintended consequences for all of the people on the face of the earth. Let's look first at the history of the production of natural gas in the United States. The vertical axis is the amount produced, the horizontal axis is year. You'll note that first we saw a drastic increase in production of natural gas that was coming from onshore wells. That began to decline. We were running out of onshore gas and just in the nick of time we began to produce prodigious amounts of natural gas from offshore wells in the Gulf of Mexico. That rose but eventually also began to decline. And note that it began to decline in this period of 2006, 2007, 2008. Just about that time, shale gas kicked in. The technological wager was taken. And since then, we have seen enormous increases in shale gas production in the U.S. What we should have done is understood back in only a decade ago that the unintended consequences of this increase of shale gas would lead to climate change exacerbation. We should have stayed 
on this path and allowed renewable energy to take the place of natural gas. Let's look at that second unintended consequence, the depression of renewable energy. Again, I'm going to show you a graph. The vertical axis is the amount of electricity produced by wind energy in the United States over the history of wind energy in the United States. You will note that there was a very fast rise, what a scientist would call a nearly exponential growth in wind energy production up to about that same period, 2008, 2009, when suddenly there is what scientists and engineers call a kink in the curve. Rather than continuing to pursue nearly exponential growth, growth flattened out, and here is the consequence. I'm going to show you the same graph now extended out through about 2028. This is the path we were on. This is the path we should have stayed on had it not been for the introduction of shale gas back in that same period, 2007-2009. And what that did was kink the curve and put us on linear growth. We can easily see there is a loss, a loss of potential, large amounts of wind energy because of the injection of shale gas into our energy economy. Let's look at the third unintended consequence, the worsening of climate change. I'm going to show two versions of the same graph. The first version is taken directly from a paper that was published six years ago. It shows the history of global warming, starting with the beginning of the 20th century. The squiggly black line is raw data, actual data taken of global climate change, temperature increase, global warming. At the time this paper was published in 2012, the data went up to about 2009. At that point, the authors of this paper made speculative simulations. Each of these solid curves is the result of one scenario where they imagined what might happen in the future should mankind decide to do certain things with regards to fossil fuels. So these were predictions. And as such, they were subject to error. But note that every one of the predictions predicted that we would be in the 1.5 degree centigrade temperature rise, that which the Paris Climate Agreement says we should attempt to avoid. And each one takes us into the 2 degree temperature rise still in this century. But this is now old information. Six years have gone by since this paper was published. Eight years have gone by since the last hard data were added to this graph. So now I'm going to show you the second version of the same graph. I have added here a series of red dots. Each of those red dots corresponds to a global temperature rise as recorded by NASA. You'll note a couple of things from this chart. First, all the simulations done back in 2010 2011, 2012, were wrong, regardless of the scenario. Worse, they were wrong in the worst possible way. Every one of these scenarios underpredicted actual global warming, whereas the worst case scenario brought us to 1.5 degrees centigrade in 2040. We're almost there today. We will certainly be there in the next two or three years. If you extrapolate from these red dots, meaning that we don't do anything significant about fossil fuels, and especially shale gas, we will be in 2 degrees centigrade territory within the next 10 to 15 years. This is frightening. So what happened to the technological gamble? Did the people who made it, the oil and gas industry, our regulators, our legislators, our governors, our president, take into account that these broader unintended consequences weren't worth the risk? I'll go to my last graph. This one shows the history and the prognosis for shale gas development in North America. You will note in purple the history of shale gas production, how much has been produced, 
and the number of wells it took to produce it. The oil and gas industry and the U.S. Department of Energy predict what's shown in the orange, a tenfold increase in shale gas production and a million additional wells to do it by 2050. Put together what I showed you in the previous chart, in this chart, and you see two diametrically opposed predictions of our future. One on this chart says more shale gas, more wells. The one on the previous chart says if we do that, we will, there will be dire consequences to every human being on earth. I want to end my presentation with questions for you. So you've noticed I've concentrated almost exclusively on shale gas. So a question is, do you think that the impact of shale oil is similar on all three of those unintended consequences? I want you to think about that and discuss it among yourselves. I also want you to think about whether shale gas and oil currently produced almost exclusively in North America will soon be produced in other places. And what will be the consequences of an even dr more drastic increase in the development of shale gas and oil around the world? The second series of questions has to do with you. What will you do in the face of this evidence? What will you do to decrease your use and demand for fossil fuels? What will you do to increase your use and demand of renewable energy in all aspects of your energy lives? I hope that this lecture offers some proof that the technological gamble of developing shale gas early in the century was one that should never have been taken and has very grave consequences for every person on earth. So thank you very much for listening to this video. I hope you do take into account the questions I asked and answer them for yourselves. Goodbye.